some of those new recommendations were actually incorporated into the 2017 annual standards of care. Um, those uh, positions will again be incorporated into the 2018 annual standards of care. And in terms of highlights, um, I think there are a few. Uh, the first has to do with assessing blood pressure. So uh, the ADA made a concerted effort to increase or uh, recommend increase in the use of home blood pressure monitoring. Patients, of course, uh, live at home, and uh, home and blood pressure monitor uh, values can differ uh, from those uh, obtained in the clinic. And there's a clear new recommendation to use home blood pressure monitoring both for diagnosis and for monitoring and titrating of therapy. So that's one new highlight. Uh, another highlight I would say is an update on the recommended targets for blood pressure treatment. Um, and the ADA has recommended uh, again, targeting less than 140 over 90 for all patients uh, with diabetes and hypertension with, very importantly, an individualization component considering different targets, including lower targets, depending on a number of patient-specific factors. And uh, the third um, uh, update that I think is important uh, relates to the types of uh, antihypertensive medications used to control blood pressure. And there's a slight uh, modification of what was recommended before in the major classes of antihypertensives that we recommend for treating blood pressure. So when a, di a diagnosis of hypertension is made, that's greater than 140 over 90, uh, of course what we want to do is confirm that diagnosis first by making repeat measurements on a separate day, usually multiple measurements on, on each of at least two days. And once we have a diagnosis made, uh, there are two things we need to do for therapy. One is lifestyle modification. So the ADA does recommend, of course, that all patients with uh, diagnosed hypertension have lifestyle modification. This is weight control, physical activity, um, uh, uh, alcohol uh, mod moderation, et cetera. Uh, and then pharmacologic therapy. And uh, most patients do require multiple medications to attain their individualized blood pressure targets. Um, if patients are in the 140 to 159 range systolic or 90 to 99 diastolic range, it's possible that one agent will obtain their, uh, their blood pressure target sufficiently, and it's quite reasonable to start with a single agent. However, if they're markedly out of control or beyond their blood pressure target, so greater than 160 systolic or greater than 100 diastolic, one blood pressure agent is not likely to attain their blood pressure target at all, uh, let alone quickly. So in order to get a more uh, um, quick attainment of blood pressure target, we recommend starting with two agents. And that could be a single pill combination of two different classes of medication or two different individual medications from, from complementases. And the re rationale there again is uh, that it's highly likely that more than one medication will be uh, needed and that starting two at once will get to goal more quickly. So the ADA recommendations on individualization for blood pressure target really parallel those for individualization of hemoglobin A1C target. That's something that many clinicians are very familiar with. And maybe I'll back up and talk a little bit about hemoglobin A1C goal individualization. The, we have more information about how to do that than we do for blood pressure. So I think it's worth starting with that and using it as an example. The patients for whom uh, we think we should uh, have tighter glucose control by hemoglobin A1C are patients, first of all, who can derive the most benefit from that. And for hemoglobin A1C, uh, that means the people for whom we can uh, forestall microvascular and macrovascular complications over a long period of time. Also, very importantly, people who can safely achieve a low hemoglobin A1C, people who are at lower risk of hypoglycemia, who have better support structures in place, uh, who can achieve their hemoglobin A1C goal with fewer medications, for example. So when we considered individualization of blood pressure targets, we leaned on the information uh, that we know about individualizing hemoglobin A1C uh, and, and extrapolated that to some extent to blood pressure. So what does that mean for blood pressure? First of all, who can, uh, who can benefit most strongly from a, a lower blood pressure? Well, the main benefit of intensive blood pressure control is reduction of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease events. 
So people who are at high risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease events, that is people who already have known atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or have risk factors such as uh, chronic kidney disease, um, uh, older age, um, other comorbid complications that increase cardiovascular risk. Those people may be patients that you consider a lower um, blood pressure target. At the same time, uh, I think that how patients can tolerate more intensive, intensive blood pressure treatment is another element, the flip side of individualizing care. And people who are already on multiple medications, who are getting drug side effects or hypotension uh, or, or uh, otherwise cannot accommodate a low blood pressure target, of course, those are people that we want to back off on and maybe not treat so uh, intensely. So I use an example of, of patients that I might see in my clinic. I have a nephrology clinic. Uh, about half of my patients have diabetic kidney disease. I can see patients who have a blood pressure of 137 over 70. Uh, two patients. One might have uh, monotherapy with lisinopril at a moderate dose uh, and have no problem with that. That's a patient that I would probably uh, intensify therapy, uh, pushing up the, the, the lisinopril dose and trying to achieve a lower target. Another patient who has the same blood pressure, 137 over 70, on five agents already, who's having difficulty taking these agents, mixing up the timing of the medications, having intermittent hypotension uh, and, and other drug side effects, it's unlikely I'm, like, I'm going to choose to intensify their blood pressure goal because I think they can't tolerate it. And that's just the, the tolerable, tolerability side of things. Of course, we have to weigh in the, the potential benefits as well. So for each patient, there should be a process, really an individualized goal setting with the provider and the patient to determine what is the best blood pressure goal based on factors such as this. What is the potential benefit? What are the potential risks of trying to, to push the blood pressure lower? Yeah, you really have to take a personalized approach. Guidelines set an overview of the approach. This is what should be considered. But in the end, is an individual doctor-patient relationship really doing best for, what's, for the patient who's, who's in front of you? It is an art. Uh, and, and, and this art needs to be applied uh, carefully and in co cooperation with the patient, of course.